Okay, my name is John Lin Wong from Georgia Tech. I'll give this lecture, particularly about the piezoelectric nano generator. Our research in the last 10 years has been focused on nano energy, nano systems, and piezoelectronics. Today, this short lecture is about piezoelectric nano generator. Our goal in the research has been focused on a smaller scale energy for power small electronics, particularly electronics we use every day. It's called nano or micro energy. Our goal is to build self-powered system because we can fabricate a device, we need a transmission system for data uh, transmission, we also need a power source, so all this can function by itself, so-called self-powered system for medical purposes, for environmental monitoring, and as well for infrastructure monitoring. So this is called self-powered nanotech. When we look at the cell power system, most associated with human, human has a lot of energy, particularly when we are moving. We are moving by all parts of our muscles. All this has energy. Example, the blood flow can have generate 0.16 watt of energy. Our breathing can generate 0.14 watt of energy. Even our finger timing can generate a couple of milliwatts and this is sufficient to drive small electronics. Our walking can generate even 11 watt of power, and this can charge a lot of portable electronics. So the human body has a reach of energy, but we must have an effective way to harvest such energy for the purpose of mobile electronics, wearable electronics, and many purposes. But those energy in our living environment has a characteristic of example. They are variable in frequency, depends where you are, also variable in amplitude. So to capture the, the, the vibration or this mechanical agitation in a wider spectrum range, we need to have a new technology which can do that. One effect is piezoelectric effect for such purposes. When you do piezoelectric, there's a lot of materials to focus on. PZT, barium titanium oxide. Our research has been focused on zinc oxide for the last 15 years. The reason for these materials is because they can fabricate very nice nanostructures and use a low-cost solution process to fabricate orientation control, dimensionality control, and distribution control nanomaterials. Most importantly, this is an environmental friendly biodegradable material, so it has a lot of unique advantage for medical purposes and many other purposes. As you can see, you can find the wave level of this nanostructure here. When we fabric this nanowires, itself is piezoelectric and a semiconductor. It uses an EFM tip to trick the nanowires, we can produce mechanical deformation. Due to the piezoelectric effect, those nanowires, when the tip is scanned across, can generate a few little volts of power. And this is what we measured 10 years ago when you have this scan and tip across nanowires to receive 5 to 10 little volts of output. And this was the birth of the nano generator back in 2006. But if you look at the, the zinc oxide material itself, it has a non-central symmetry. That means the cations and anions are tetrahedrally coordinated. The center of cations and anions overlaps under normal conditions. But once you subject the mechanical strain, the center of cations and anions polarizes, give you a dipole moment. Each unit gives you a dipole moment. If you look at the whole nanowire, you can have a microscopic polar charge at both ends, negative charge here, positive charge here, you have a potential drop across the nanowire along its length because this is the polar direction. How does electricity generate by an external mechanical force? If you have a part mechanical strain, polar charge are created. And the induced electron flow from one electron to the other one through external load give you a pulse. 
then release the strain, electron flows back to you another power. Apply the strain again, polar charge drive the induced electron to flow again. So this is a cycle of periodical mechanical agitation, drive the electron to flow in an external load back and forth, back and forth, giving you this AC output power. You notice that we have a block here to prevent the electrons to flow through the internal of the nanowires. Power generation must push the electrons to move in the external load in order to power the power. This is a requirement. That's why we need to normally have a, a barrier layer over here. So this is the basic principle of nano generator in general. If you have a nano wire put on a subject in laboratory, this can also be a generator. If you bend in the nano wire by the mechanical deformation of the substrate, you can produce polar charges at the two end, give a piece of potential or quad so along the length. Now, this is the band diagram between the two contacts and the single nano wires here. Let's say we have some shorting contact here. Now, we need at least at one end have a shorting contact to rectify the current. In this case, now, if we have uh, mechanical deformation, the polar charge created at the two ends of the nano wires, it's the potential difference. This is potential difference, positive potential lower the Fermi level, negative raise the Fermi level. So there's a difference between the Fermi level and the two end. In such a case, the electron flow through here to rebalance the difference in the Fermi level to reach a new equilibrium. This flow process gives you the first pulse peak. Now, if you release the strain, the piezo charge disappears, no potential drop. Then a, this side drops back to the original Fermi level, and this side remain there, and then the electron back flow. The back flow can be another current. So this cycle motion gives you this output of voltage and the current, typically about 20 millivolts and a few uh, uh, is about, about a fraction of a nano and a current from a single nano wire. So this is the basic principle. So if you put this in a finger A here, the motion of the finger can drive this deformation, giving you this AC output. Stretching and a releasing give you this kind of idea. If you put this on the near the biological system, for example, the heart of a small rat, this can give you an AC output as well, but due to the hard motion is not regular, so you can see the signal is a little more complicated, but this do carry biological information in the electric output, and this was the first demonstrated heartbeating driven nano generator in 2010. Now, single nano wire is not enough. We need to make many nano wires, so, so we can have an integrated output. So we grow nano wires between the two electrodes, and now if you have one electron here, which is chromium, the other is gold. So this can be grown across these wires here to reach the bridge. The idea back then is that each wire give you a small current, but all this one can give you the sum of the current. So it can be something which can be useful. And this was the original device design, and this is the device we fabricated in our lab. 700 rows along this length, and this was an integrated of the contribution from nano wire, many nano wires in the one device. So we measure such, for example, we raise the, the output voltage from a uh, few millivolts to about 1.2 volts. This is through many rows, for example. We have many rows, this one. The integration of this one add up with the voltage. But all the wires in one row here give you the current. That's why the voltage raised to 1.2 volts. But the current also raises to nano ampere current for this device here. So this was demonstrated in 2010 in our group for this single sun nano wire, basically a power output. Okay. Later on, we also can transfer this s row nano wires along this, the particular direction. This cannot be messed up because all these wires must be aligned in a polar direction along one direction. So when you do the electrode like this, you can have a sum of the contribution from all the wires here. And this, back then, we got probably about two volts output. We got about 100 nanoampere current, as we expected. A gigantic increase from the original value we received. So this was the integrate. I used this kind of device here. It's about one centimeter or so. 
and we'd be able to apply a single LED light as a flashlight here, which was the first time using piezoelectric nanowire generated power can drive an LED back in 2010. But this gives the hope for the future research to continue to scale up this kind of power generator in, uh, from material synthesis to device fabrication to measurements. This, again, as a continuation of that, we have a soft substrate. We can grow nanowires on a soft substrate as a rose here, and condense the rose here, which form a nanowire made of thin film here. We grow on the top surface and bottom surface. Because zinc oxide can grow with solution chemistry at a temperature 85 degrees C, so that any substrate is, is, is appropriate. So this, in other words, zinc oxide can grow on any substrate, any shape substrate, to tolerate the geometry and the materials requirement for any practical application. This is one of the advantage with zinc oxide wires. And you can see this is a packaging device here, and this bending back and forth can give you power here. And as you see here, this uh, theoretical calculation shows that this device should be about 80 volts output, and our experiment shows about 10 volts. The reason we are lower than the theoretical is because theoretical is not considered a conductivity with the zinc oxide nanowires, so therefore the measurement is smaller. But 10 volts is a 10 times enhancement compared to our previous, and the current reach to microampere current. So this is one device around a one centimeter by one centimeter device integrate many nanowires together. Later on, we can have nine of this one fully packaged. So this is fully packaged. Inside we have the electrode, we have a nanowire assembly, we have the top electrode, insulators, and the packaging material. So this is a fully functional device here, which gives about 100 microampere current and over 50 volts of output by three, nine of this one integrate together. As a result, we can stimulate biological species by this because 50 volts is high enough. For example, hand pressing here generates 50 volts, which can stimulate the nerve of this frog leg. And just demonstration, the power can be for medical purposes, for mechanical or biological motions. Again, 50 volts, 110 micro and the current, and stimulate biological species for that. As a continuation of this work, we not only will follow power generation, we will look for a solar powered sensor system. Not only can it have the energy, whatever energy available from the environment, can thermal, mechanical, or chemical energy, can it have the energy, we can do the energy storage, we can sense the change in the environment, we can do data processing data transmission. All this put together is a self-powered system. Self-powered system which relies no external power source to operate sustainably and uh, continuously by itself. The idea is an analogy for medical uh, from these cells. It can have, a, for example, this sensor system can have an active mode, a standby mode, and this mode do the activify mode can acquire the data, transmission data, but do the standby mode, this can half the energy and keep the energy in a slowly unit for applications for many things, for example, from implantable medical devices, in both pressure monitoring, environmental monitoring, internet of things, and large asset tracking and structure monitoring and security. Many, many more. So this is the sole power system we have developed for the last 10 years. Let me then assume a couple of the uh, early day work. This was a pH sensor, and this is a nano generator. Nano generator output of voltage and the current. This output of voltage and current can be drive this pH sensor. When the pH changes, the conductivity of the nano wire changes. So the voltage or current across these wires will be different. And this is the voltage measurement across the sensors as the pH increases. But the increase from here to here, you can see the current in the system increase, a voltage increase because the resistance change. So this change in the signal is an indication of the pH value. But power is from the nano generator converted external mechanical agitation into electricity. 
The second example is the UV sensor. In the UV illuminated the nanowires is called activity uh, increased dramatically. So therefore, we measure the body drop. There's a gigantic change. When the UV lights are off and UV lights are on, you can see the voltage across the nano sensor drops from 25 millivolts to almost zero. That's the power provided is from the nano generator. Again, this was an early day demonstration of the self-powered nano sensor system. We not only satisfy just the sensors, but we also have generated power, storage of power, and do the wireless data acquisition, also to the uh, wireless data transmission. So we can truly form a functional system as here. And this was the tricking input the signal which triggered this sensor. Then use the nano generator power storage, and we can transmit the data. 20 meters away, we receive the transmit data in one pulse. If we ex expand this pulse, this gives you this peaks here. You see, it synchronized very well with the initial excitation signal of the sensors, which prove the concept of which can truly generate power, storage, drive the sensor, and then transmission the data wirelessly and remotely. Again, this is the cell power system demonstration for this one. Another work we have shown is this, this uh, 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 mercury sensor. You see, that when, the, when you have a carbon nanotube make the mercury sensor here, its conductivity changed with the mercury content. With the increase of mercury content, the current will through the system increase dramatically. And this is an indication of how much mercury content in an, in an environment. So we use our nano generator and drive this one. Once the mercury content exceeds a critical value, that the lead light will flash. So indicate this over the standard. And we demonstrated a few years ago, we did show that it flashes, and then once it's over some kind of uh, critical number, which can flash here, this is an indication of so powered uh, mercury sensors for environmental monitoring. And this idea can be expanded to many systems we are familiar with so that for small electronics, our nanogen will be ideally for this kind of work. So from 2005, we started the work with nanowires to a few millivolts. And then we gradually raised the output voltage to a fraction of volts by 2009. And by 2011, we have reached 10, 50 volts and a power out to full density, which 500 millivolts per centimeter cube. This is a relatively long in which we have learned a lot. We also have explored a lot of possibilities. That's why nano generators have become one of the technology people are very interested today for driving small electronics, wearable electronics, and personal related electronics. We know sense only one kind of energy harvesting. We are interested in simultaneous harvesting multiple type of energy because our living environment is due to solar, mechanical, thermal, and chemical energies. Can we use one device to simultaneously harvest all of them if possible? This is the idea for small electronics because the working environment of this one changes. You can have lights or no lights. You can have mechanical action, actions or no mechanical action. Can we do a hybrid self idea? This idea was first proposed by our group in 2008. The idea at that time was use the piezoelectric nanowire basis generator. We have multiple nanowire on the substrate. We have a zigzag electron on top. This simulates a ray of the EFM tips. And this is a sampling of the structure here. And once on the mechanical vibration, such as induced by sonic wave, the nanowire can bend the left hand side or right side. Regardless of which way bending, the contact between the nanowire and the electrode is always have the positive piezoelectric potential here which is the key for rectifying the whole current so all the output nanowires can end up coherently and constructively. So the advantage that the current, the electron will inject in this way so that the current can end up uh, constructively as we expected. And this can be used on the sonic wave drive here. You can see this electron uh, transfer from this system here to, uh, to the SNC. This is the current flow from the electron to the the nanowires so all can add up. And this uh, short encounter here serves as a rectification effect so that we have a DC output for this kind of generator. 
And this is the mechanical driven uh, generator, converted mechanical energy to electricity. Okay? And this was the original assembly, and this is the nanowires. This is the structure here, which is the ultrasonic side that, and this nanowire can be walking back and forth, left or right, and can be random. But all of the current add up, you can see all the current add up, and you can switch the polarity of the connections here, you can test the signal also switches, which proved this was the true signal from the system, so called forward bias and reverse bias to the measurement system. So this kind of nanowire can truly harvest the mechanical energy generated by ultrasonic wave into electricity. So now we do the integration with the solar cell. The original idea was this. This was a solar cell. This was a diacetyl solar cell, solid state structure. Inside we have the zinc oxide, and also have the dye molecule here. We have the top of the gold electron here. So you can see, the gold, top gold electron is similar like this. This is the gold electron. This is the zinc nanowire. This is the mechanical nano generator. Inside here is this part. This is the solar cell. When the sunlight shining here, the light will transmit through here. Inside the nanowire will be multiple reflection here. So convert the solar energy into electricity. And this walking back and forth convert the mechanical energy into, into electricity. So we can add up. So we can add up that. So this is solar energy, mechanical energy. Let's see if the two parts can add up coherently. And this is the device structure here. This is the schematic. This is the top part. You can see this is the nanowire aspect. The nanowire is thinner. But this is the thicker. The reason the thick is because we have multi layer of this uh, the diocese and solar cell fabricated around the nanowire here. So this is the top. The bottom here. So put the top on the bottom. We are still assembling like illustrate here. We have a hybrid cell. This is the output. If you only measure the nano generator, we should have about 9 millivolts of output. The blue curve is the solar cell only. If the two work together, you can see the push, the voltage, 9 millivolts to higher. So the red curve is the hybrid cells here. As a result, these two work together, totally enhance the total output in the power or efficiency by 6%. But this is not only a simple illustration of a little change here, but it's a new concept. Use one device and simultaneously harvest the solar and the mechanical energy. And this is so-called hybrid cells, which can have today can have many different projects as we talk about in the next couple of slides as well. So this will demonstrate simultaneous harvesting solar and the mechanical energy by one device. Whenever they are available, wherever they are available. Available. The second example show is simultaneous harvesting biomechanical and mechanical energies. Our system designed as well PV, uh, uh, PVDF nanowires, and we can make a uh, electron on top. And this can convert the mechanical energy into electricity, use the polar direction guided this uh, crystallization process of PVDF. You can see change the string here, you have the output of voltage, the output of the current. This covers the mechanical energy part, just as we illustrate for zinc oxide for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, piezoelectric nano generator. Now how about the chemical part? By chemical part it is the biofuel cell, biofuel cell. In the anode we have the oxidation reaction here. So glucose here is being converted to gluconolator plus proton plus electrons here and use the GOX as the catalyst. So this is on the anode. On the cathode, we have the reduction reaction here. The proton and the electrons here will recombine the oxygen to produce water. But on the design here is that the proton being go through the, the uh, uh, electrolyte system as the electro uh, proton conductor here. The electron has to go through the external load. So in the Oxidation process will produce a proton and uh, uh, electrons. Electrons go through the outside circuit, and the proton goes to inside electrolytes, separate two packages here and do the, the reduction uh, reaction over here. So this is the basic principle of biofuel cell. As you see that, with this uh, DC output, as we change the concentration of the, uh, uh, the 
glucose here, you can see that out of 35 millivolts to 50 to about 62 uh, uh, millivolts once you increase the concentration of the uh, biofuel here. And this is the current increase in correspondingly here. So you do have power output. Our idea is to build this tube into one substrate. On the top is PVDF nanowire made of nanogenical converted mechanical energy. Of course, this has to be packaged, so it cannot be exposed to the liquid. The bottom part is the biofuel cell. The, we have the anode, we have the cathode. We can, this substrate can bend downward, upward. As you see, put in a biosolution here, we can convert mechanical energy and uh, biochemical energy. This is the biochemical energy output. This is a DC output. This is the biomechanical energy. If the two work together, this is the total output. You can see this is the AC output, and this is the DC output. And if you put them together, they can work co coherently. At the end, the power output is the add up of the two power as we generate separately. So this demonstrates a simultaneous harvesting biomechanical and biochemical energy. These things can drive a sensor. For example, this is a sensor, UV sensor here. And which lights off and on the conductivity change is the power generator. We can drive this sensor again. It shows the possibility of a solar power system used to hybrid itself simultaneously or individually harvesting mechanical and biochemical energy as a photo sensor here. So, as a summary, we wrote a book a few years ago, and this book is a free download online. If you write down this web page, you can free download this book and it's official copy by Georgia Tech. And uh, this gives you a comprehensive uh, uh, coverage on nanogenerator cell power device and systems, most related to piezoelectric and nanogenerators and, 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 and some uh, social applications for that. So in the summary, we demonstrate two things. Number one, we demonstrate use nanowires for piezoelectric nanogenerator. It's based on the physical potential driven flow of electrons in the external load. Based on nano generator, we show you the solar power nano devices, nano systems, which can be sustainably and self sufficient as a power source for small electronics and the portable electrons and hopefully wearable electronics, so called nano generator and the self power system. Thank you very much.